All right, this lead code question is called move zeros. It says given an array nums, write a function to move all zeros to the end of it while maintaining the relative order of the non-zero elements. So the example is the array 0, 1, 0, 3, 12, and the output is 1, 3, 12, 0, 0, because all the zeros have been moved to the end. And then we have a note. You must do this in place without making a copy of the array. Minimize the total number of operations. All right, the key to solving this problem is to use two different pointers at once. And by pointer, I don't mean actual pointer like in C++, I just mean references to two different elements at once. So we'll call the first pointer explorer, and we'll call the second pointer anchor. What explorer will do is advance until it finds a non-zero element. In the meantime, anchor will just stay back, hence why we're calling it anchor. It will only be allowed to move forward when explorer finds a non-zero element and swaps with it. At that point, anchor can move forward. I'll show you what I mean. Is explorer on a non-zero element? No, it's not. So it needs to advance. Now, is this element non-zero? No, it's not. So it needs to advance again. Now, is this element a zero? No, it's not. So what Explorer is going to do is give its element to Anchor, and Anchor is going to give its element to Explorer. So 6 will now go to the front, and 0 will now be swapped. So now Explorer gets to advance as usual, but this time Anchor also gets to advance. Why is that? It's because we know that it's definitely not on a zero anymore. How do we know that? Because Explorer just swapped with it and gave it a non-zero. So we can just advance. As we can see, Anchor is effectively hanging back on zeros and waiting for Explorer to switch with it. So we'll do the same check. Is Explorer on a zero? Yes, it is. So we'll advance at 1. Now is it on a 0? No, it's not. So we'll do the same swap as before. All right. So as usual, we advance Explorer. And again, we get to advance Anchor because it just swapped with Explorer for a non-zero element. So now it needs to move forward. And we'll check again. Is Explorer on a zero? No, it's not. So we'll just swap them. And as we can see, all of the zeros have been moved to the end of the array. All right, so let's get to the code. What lead code has given us is a function called move zeros. It accepts a parameter called nums, which is just an array whose zeros we want to move to the end. So remember, we need two different pointers. One we'll call anchor, and we'll start it at the first element. So let anchor equal zero. That'll look like this. And the second pointer we'll call explorer. Remember, pointer is always advanced no matter what, so that's perfect for a for loop. So let explorer equals zero, explore less than nums.length, explore plus plus. Okay, so that would put explore in the same place. So right here. All right, now we have to check if explorer is on a non-zero number. So we'll say if nums explore doesn't equal zero.
but in our case, it does equal zero. So we'll have to skip forward to the next loop. That'll put us here. Okay, so now we check again. Is Explorer at a non-zero number? It is. So now we can swap Explorer and Anchor's elements. So Explorer will be zero and Anchor will be three. In the code, we'll do a typical swapping mechanism. So let temp equal nums ex oops nums anchor nums anchor will now be replaced with whatever's in explorer and now explorer will be replaced with whatever was originally in anchor remember we've saved that to temp Okay, so now that anchor is definitely not a zero, we can also advance anchor. All right, so that'll look like this. Anchor gets moved up and the next for loop happens. So now explorer gets moved up. Then we check again, is explorer on a non-zero number? No, it's not. So we'll advance it one. It checks again. Is Explorer on a non-zero number? Yes, it is. So now we can swap the elements. 12 becomes zero. And zero becomes 12. All right, so now that anchor is definitely not on a zero, we can advance it. Next for loop starts, so we can advance Explorer. It checks if it's on a zero. Yes, it is. So it advances it one more time. And then we're done because we're outside the bounds of the array. So that should be it. Let's run the code. Looks good. Let's submit it. All right, so our solution was faster than about 85% of other JavaScript submissions. As usual, the code and written explanation are linked down below. If you liked the video, please help out the channel by giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel. See you next time.